Colfax Avenue, often traveled. They lived in the Denver area. And full of unanswered questions concerning these four women. There's obviously the pattern of their sex, race, uh, that they're uh, prostitutes. I, I think the Weld County connection where they were found is, was just uh, opportunity. Byron Castellon is a Weld County cold case detective. And most of my job as a cold case detective is reading over what other detectives have, and what other people have made statements on. He spent the last year revisiting dozens of cold cases. Getting a timeline going and finding out uh, what facts I can go on. Including the deaths of Yvonne Rabb, Robin Nelson, Valerie Meeks, and Tammy Cheeks. Was murdered and they, they appeared to have been uh, dumped off of uh, county roads, rural, rural areas, found by uh, farmers or hunters sometimes. Time consuming work, but new technology offers new opportunity. The technology for DNA and, and any crime scene evidence that we have is advanced more now um, and it's broken old cases before. Cases like the murder of Yvonne Rabb, last seen in November 1981 near Five Points. She had been spending some time at, the bar, at some bars, talking to friends, playing pool. Witnesses told police they saw her in an alley with two men. One was armed. And the witness said that they heard uh, a shotgun blast. The next day, Rabb was found shot to death near County Roads 8 and 11 in Decono. Her sister told investigators someone wanted to kill her, but she never knew who. It sounded like just somebody, it wasn't like drugs or money, it was like somebody got angry at her and wanted to kill her. Nearly seven years later, June 7, 1988, 22-year-old Robin Nelson's family reported her missing. She dropped her daughter off with friends and never came back. Then she was discovered June 12th in Weld County. She was also found near Decono, uh, near I-25 and County Road 8. So she wasn't shot, she possibly had a drug overdose. So she might not have been intentionally murdered, but obviously she was dumped. Fingerprints confirmed her identity. After speaking with Robin's family. Got descriptions of a brown van and a, a strange friend, you know, just a friend of hers that she would hang out with. Um, try, I'm working on trying to identify him. Summer 1991, 36-year-old Valerie Meeks hadn't been seen for weeks. She was the sweetest person. She was very giving, very loving. And so when my grandmother said that she hadn't heard from her, then I called and I had filed a, a missing persons report, you know, with the police department. It would be weeks before 19-year-old Idrisa was called to the station where she learned she'd never see her mother again. The thing I think was the worst part because I wasn't able to see her. Meeks was found dead in July of 1991 in Erie near Well County Roads 4 and 5, a plastic bag over her head. The following year, on November 15, 1992, 24-year-old Tammy Cheeks was also found with a bag over her head, this time in Hudson, near County Roads 18 and 51. They had similar friends and associates, so it's nothing, nothing in the case file that I could find stating that they interacted like they were friends, but they, I imagine they would have known each other. Now for the first time in decades, an investigator is drawing a connection between these four cases. Castellan has been investigating for the last year. He's identified two persons of interest, both serving life sentences. Richard Paul White, a convicted prostitute killer, denied any involvement. Billy Edwin Reed, another convicted killer, also denied involvement. Well, any tips would be very much welcome. Obviously a, a confession would be big if somebody wants to come forward and confess to these murders. For me, it would mean a lot. It just kind of would be a relief and maybe some type of closure. Closure for the families of four mothers after Colfax Avenue left them shrouded in mystery. From 1975 to 1995, police believed that there was a serial killer murdering prostitutes throughout Five Points and along Colfax Avenue. This fear prompted them to create a Denver Homicide Task Force in August of 1988. That task force named several persons of interest before eventually ruling them out. Most of them were either too young to commit the crimes or incarcerated at the time of the crimes. However, it's still unclear if all of these women's deaths were connected to one sole killer. Mm. 
I mean, it makes your heart break for these families that never really got answered. So you mentioned that they were all prostitutes. How did that complicate the investigation? You know, I think it had a significant impact on it when you really think about it, because you have dozens of women who were killed within a 20 year span. But it wasn't until the numbers started to show a trend that this task force was created to investigate. Their cases were remembered as them being prostitutes. But one thing these women have in common, they're all mothers, mm -hmm. they're all daughters, and they have family mm -hmm. that loves them. You know, you talk about this concept of time being hard with suspects or potential suspects passing away with time, um, but could it also be helpful with new technologies at helping solve the case? Right. Yeah, you know, that's one thing that they continue to talk about, and it's really fascinating. You know, it really does get harder as time goes on because you have loved, loved ones who pass and you have witnesses who pass as well. I mean, we're sitting here talking about a situation that happened 30 and 40 years ago, so imagine what could happen during that time. And it's come down to a point where if they didn't gather evidence back then, they are now having to go back and ex exhume bodies mm -hmm. of the victims mm -hmm. to be able to gather evidence to start to piece things together. Um, going into their case file room, you have all of these boxes, sometimes nine, nine boxes connected to a name, and you have to sift through all of that. Handwritten files 30 and 40 years ago. Wow. Well, yeah, I hope the next report you have is an update for us because, uh, you know, sometimes just getting the word out there, just the publicity, yeah. you know, will spark something. So yeah, maybe, and you know, maybe that'll be the case. Yeah, for sure. And I think the one thing to really get out there, of course, they need your help. It's 30, been 30 or 40 years, but if you have any information, if you know any of these women, if you remember anything from those nights, you're asked to call Detective Castellan. That number is at the bottom of your screen, 970-400-2827. Looking forward to the rest of your series. Great Thank job. So Darius, thanks.